recording here. So just going to record the meeting today so that um, people who aren't able to get on can uh, can watch it later on if they want to. All righty. So just want to talk um, briefly about uh, Project Propel so that um, so you know a little bit more about the background about, about why we're here. And I assume that, that most of you have heard a little bit about it, but just wanted to be sure. And wanted to let you know that it's a partnership between uh, Beacon and, and the Mental Health Association in Lincoln. And some of you may have listened in on the webinar that Alan Green, who's the director of the Mental Health Association, uh, did just a little bit ago on service definitions. And he's worked with me um, to prepare what we're doing here today. And I know that we have some volunteers from the Mental Health Association to uh, serve in some leadership positions uh, with this project, so much appreciated. I'm going to go ahead and just um, launch a question here for you, just to be sure we're on the right track. If you can click on your screen and answer to the question, and for those of you that can't see it, it just basically asks if you feel like you understand the purpose of Project Propel. And um, if you do or don't, let me know, and I can always provide more information. But in a nutshell, we're trying to move the peer support workforce forward. And that's what we do for all the different disciplines um, related to behavioral health in Nebraska. And of course, uh, peer support is a big part of that. So uh, we're working on things like developing a service definition, looking at how we can get uh, funding for peer support service. Uh, we've talked a lot about developing a professional organization, and that's what Beacon does, is help folks like those of you that are on the line get those things going and, and be sure that you have a solid base in place to, to keep the profession going and getting people served across the state. The, um, I go ahead and close this poll here. Looks like most of you, um, most of you feel pretty good in your understanding about Project Propel. So if any of you need more information, please just let me know. I appreciate you answering the poll. So here's the agenda, what we're gonna do today. Um, thanks very much to all of you that um, have volunteered to at least learn more about this today and learn more about what it, what it would um, involve to be a leader in your particular area of the state. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what we need here in the short term, uh, collecting information about service definitions, and then talk about what we're going to do moving forward from today. I've unmuted all of you, I think. So you should be able to just um, talk whenever you want to. Is there anybody who has any questions or anything you'd like to add to the agenda today? No. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'll put up here, uh, who I have down so far in each region. Um, and for those of you who, who can't see, I just have a list of, of names per region of people that have volunteered to, to participate as leaders so far. And I think who I'm missing, uh, one person is Ann Reynolds. Is she on the line? Or does anyone know what region she's in? I think she works for Magellan, but I need to be sure. Okay, and I think Nancy Rippon was going to join us. Is she on the line? Does anyone know what region she's in? No. She's in region two. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I'll add her to region two then here. 
How about uh, Scott Loader? Is he on the line? Does anyone know what region he's in? No. I think he's five. Five, okay. So for those of you that have this up on your screen, you can see that in some regions we have um, quite a few volunteers, regions three, five, and six. I think we've got, um, looks like five or more folks. Um, in region one, we have two volunteers. Uh, region four, we have two volunteers. And region two, um, once I add Nancy in there, looks like we have one from region two. So I'm gonna do a little bit more recruiting to see if we can get some more folks, um, especially in region two, so that we don't have just one person doing all this themselves. Uh, but if any of you could give me some help with that, maybe suggest folks I should contact, um, I would really appreciate it. Does anyone know especially in regions one, two, or four, if there's anyone that would like to be a part of this that maybe hasn't contacted me yet. I might have a, a couple ideas in region four. I can, I can reach out and talk to a couple people and see if they're interested. Okay, that would be great. Anybody else? You can always let me know. I think the, um, you know, the more people, the more people we have, the better. Um, just so that it, you know, the responsibilities don't fall to one person or just a few people. So, looking here at the map, just for those of you that may not know the full geography of where the regions are, you can see there uh, region two um, is in the North Platte area. So we need to do some pretty heavy recruiting, I think, in that particular area. And Region 4, um, that extends up there to Cherry County, down into the Norfolk, Columbus area. Um, we could use some more folks there. And then um, in Region 1 in the Panhandle, if there's some additional folks that could volunteer from that region, that'd be great, too. Okay. So really what we're talking about here um, with a, a leadership effort from all of you is a, pro a project about community organization. And probably you've heard that term before. Um, I think President Obama used to be a community organizer. But really what it means is you are organizing people to say something to make their voice heard or to do something. And usually you're organizing people to do this that don't do something like that on a regular day. You know, um, it may be the, the um, administrator's job at the Department of Behavioral Health to make decisions like the ones that we're gonna talk about today, every day, that's what she does for a living. But for the folks that are working in peer support positions across the state, this sort of thing isn't what they do every day. So they need help getting organized and being sure that their opinions are known and that their opinions get to the right people, um, that their ideas uh, are also heard and, and we can figure out ways to act on those ideas. So that's really what this is, is just being sure that we've organized people enough to help them get their voice heard, help them get their opinions out there and be sure that um, those opinions are acted on. Or if they're not going to be acted on, then we know why. And we can share that information with everybody that's participating. So as far as expectations go, um, I don't believe in a lot of uh, meetings just for the sake of meeting. So um, for those of you that decide to stay on as leaders for your area of the state for Project Propel, we will meet when we have a reason to meet. Um, you know, those reasons would be to share information, to talk about what kind of tasks are we um, needing to get done, um, progress with tasks that we're working on. Um, so the, there'll be a definite purpose anytime we meet. I'd like to do in-person meetings, um, but I know that that's not necessarily practical for all of us, um, given obviously geography, but also time limitations. I know everybody's busy. 
So I think we'll probably use this format um, for the majority of our, our conversation. So hopefully that's okay with everybody. Um, I can record the meetings then and make them available like I've mentioned. So that seems to work pretty good for people who can't attend. One thing um, I do want to emphasize that if you are comfortable volunteering for a leadership position, I do need you to read what gets sent out. And I'll try not to flood you with, with information. But really, what you're doing is collecting information that you can pass on to the other folks in your area that need to know it. So you're really the filter and the go-to person so that if people have questions about what's going on, you know, you, you can answer those questions. You can get them additional information. Um, of course, if you don't have the answers, we can we can help out or find somebody that can help out. But I need you to read what comes out. I need you to know what's going on because you're going to be the, the person really that's counted on in that area of the state. So that's something to think about. Uh, but again, I won't, I'll, I'll try very hard not to flood you with stuff that you need to read. Communicating with... Um, the peers in your region that's going to be really important and so some of you may know how to get in contact with the peer support specialists in your region uh, some of you may need some help with that and I'm happy to help but developing that way to get in touch with them and then maintaining that consistent communication is, is also an expectation and then also you see that you know because there are multiple people um, in most regions that have volunteered you know, part of your responsibility is to coordinate with those other people that have volunteered in your region um, to be sure you guys are using your time effectively and, and all on the same page and, and all of that. And, you know, you're not bound just because you signed up um, to hear more about this today. If you, we go through this and you decide that, you know, this just really isn't for you, um, I'm happy to take your name off um, or at some time in the future, if it's just something that you're not able to commit to. Uh, no harm done, just just let me know, because I know we're all doing as much as we can and the best we can. Um, the one thing that I don't want to do is, is add an additional burden to what I know are already really busy schedules. One thing I'd ask for you to consider is whether you can do work for Project Propel during your normal work hours, and if that's okay with your employer. Um, I know for some, um, they may not be afforded that time, through their employer and so that's going to mean that they need to do this sort of work outside of their normal work hours and I just get a little worried about that for anybody um, who's already doing a hard job during the day that you know is it really something that you want to take on in addition to what you're doing every day um, so if, if you need to talk more about that let me know um, and I'm happy to talk to employers too to see if um, you know, maybe we can come to some kind of agreement if you want to volunteer, but we can limit the time that we, you know, are asking of you to take during the day. Maybe that would help. Just let me know. Something to think about. So as the regional leader, um, you'll have different topics to focus on. And... Project Propel uh, staff will give you direction on what sorts of things uh, we think we need to be working on with, with different peers across the state. In the short term, I think we need to um, focus on the, the service definition piece. We're going to talk about that more today, obviously. And that's because we have a, um, a request from the Department of Behavioral Health to gather this feedback and, and get it to them so that they can uh, get a service definition put in place, but they don't want to do that without feedback from all of you. So it's great that DBH has asked us to do this and is so interested in what everybody has to say. I'm, I'm really happy about that and really thank them for that. And um, I think that really speaks to the kind of um, priorities that they have right now. And I'm really glad that they are um, involving us and all of you in this process. But they do want to um, get it moving and they don't want it to take too long um, so we do have some timelines that we need to work with and and thusly this is a, a shorter term goal for us I also have gotten a lot of feedback about um, 
helping uh, to create a professional organization in the state. And so that would be something like, you know, the um, Nebraska Association of Social Workers or the Nebraska Association of Marriage and Family Therapists or community health workers in the state have a professional organization. I can't remember what it's called for sure. But to create one of those for peer support specialists in Nebraska is something that seems to be really important to a lot of people. So I'd like for us to consider that in some of our short term planning also. Uh, but that's a conversation that we can have after we get the service definition uh, stuff underway. Uh, longer term topics you may be working on as a leader for Project Propel include um, Medicaid funding, other third party funding. Um, how would we manage charitable contributions, um, the training and credentialing processes? How can we get more paid positions out there across the state? How can we do a better job of networking with one another? Really, we take a look at the priorities that were established during the summit, um, during the planning uh, process there on September 1st. <coughs> Excuse me and other feedback that, that folks have identified and, and provided through Project Propel and try to, to weed through that feedback and, and pick out some goals and things that, that we could work on. So there are a lot of topics that we need to cover. But today, let's stick to um, service definitions. Any questions right now? Uh, this is John Friday um, in Region 6. Uh, what I was wondering is when you mention peer and then you start talking about peer support specialists, when you mention peer, you mean our regular peers, those that include not just peer support specialists, but the general peer population, right? That's a good point, John. Thank you. Um, I do think that, yeah, peers would play an integral role in this process, whether they're specialists or no. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Any other questions? Okay, so I'll put a slide up now that just kind of gives you the big picture about what we're going to do over the next uh, month or so. We want to gather as much input as we possibly can from folks across the state. Those would include uh, peers, peer support specialists, uh, thank you for bringing that up again, John. And I think other stakeholders, um, staff people that work with peer support specialists, administrators that are going to work on this stuff. Um, I think we need to touch base with those folks, too, if we can. We're going to organize all of this input that we're gathering. Um, I will help with that, and others in Project Propel will help with that. And we'll give that input to the Department of Behavioral Health for their use as they develop a service definition and move it through the regulatory process. If um, there are some of you that weren't able to um, listen in on the service definition webinar that Alan Green did recently, um, there is a recorded version available and I'll send that out in a follow-up email today just in case you haven't seen it. And I can make those slides available too. Um, if you need those, but that's a really good um, way to help people get background and help yourself get a little bit more background about why this is important. Um, I've learned a lot more about um, the region's service definitions and the difference between those and a service definition through the Department of Behavioral Health. So there are um, most or all of the regions that already have some kind of service definition for peer support. Some have multiple definitions depending on the type of peer support we're talking about because I'm sure most of you know that that service is paid through uh, the regions. It de it's different depending on the area of the state, but that's already happening. Uh, the Department of Behavioral Health, which is, you know, the larger organization, um, and not interchangeable with the regions. Um, it's a different entity over the regions, but um, they don't always do things exactly the same, I guess is how I would um, characterize that. The Department of Behavioral Health does not have a service definition for peer support. And now that they're ready to create one, um, I believe that means that they also wanna consider 
paying for the service. Um, so that's a big deal. And we want to be sure that, that we're giving them input so that uh, they're paying for the things that represent best practice. We also learned that um, the service definition that uh, the Department of Behavioral Health moves through the regulatory process and then um, eventually is adopted and put into our state regulations will influence the way that Medicaid pays for the service if indeed they do pay for it at some point. So not only is this going to impact how the Department of Behavioral Health pays for the service, but it will likely um, impact the way other parties pay for the service also. Anybody want to add to that? Because this is a complicated subject and I know a lot of you had a really a lot of really good insight on it. Okay, as you're talking to folks in your area, I think one thing to really keep in mind is that in order for people to give good input, um, be really motivated to share their opinions and, and really be able to share ideas and, and generate good discussion, they have to understand what it is that we're asking of them. They have to understand what it is that they're talking about. So part of what I'm going to ask you to do is be sure that those in, in the region that we're talking to really have a good education about this is why this is important, this is what we're doing. And one way you may want to do that is to, you know, give an example. I have one up on the screen now that is in our state regulations. And we talked about this during the webinar with Alan Green. Um, it's a service definition for recovery support. And we use this just as an illustration to show these are the different elements um, of a service definition. These are some of the things that are included. And sometimes I think that's helpful for people to take a look at something to kind of get a context for what you're talking about. For those of you that are on the uh, web today, I've included in your um, dialog box, the gray box that should be up on your screen, some documents that are available for download. And um, there's three of those that say feedback collected prior to October 2015. One is on youth peer support. One is on adult peer support. Uh, one is on family peer support. And this is a collection of ideas that have already come in from folks across the state. And so these were compiled by the Department of Behavioral Health and forwarded to me so that I could share them with all of you just for your reference. So you know that, you know, a lot of folks have already given input on this and this is what it looks like. And now we can build on it. Um, so I'll send those out uh, in an email, follow up email that'll come to all of you after the webinar. But if you want to click on those, um, you can download them now uh, in your dialog box. I share this here, um, it's just an informational slide about the regula regulation process. Uh, what's underlined in blue there in the rule drafting period is where we are now in this process. So we're there at the beginning um, and DBH is soliciting input from interesting, interested parties, uh, which would be all of us. And I'm sure they'll get input from other folks too. But you may want to use something like this when you're um, communicating with people in your region to help them understand um, kind of what's happening, what the process is. Okay. Our process uh, is going to be fairly simple, but kind of intense because we have a short timeline here. So I'm going to put up um, a checklist that I put together, put this up on the screen here, that's also um, available for you to download in your gray dialog box now, but I'll send it out with the email too. And it goes through um, suggestions about how to get this done by the end of November. So pretty simple there. The first step is, you know, read the email and the attachments that I'm going to send to you by the end of the day. 
Uh, second step is, you know, gather up the other people in your region that have volunteered. Um, so y'all are, are working together and then decide who's going to lead your team. Uh, here on the, the checklist, I call that a POC or a point of contact. Uh, you can certainly call that person whatever you want. But that makes it a little easier uh, so everybody knows kind of who's the last word on what's happening there. And then email me the name of your point of contact by November 4th. That's here on the checklist here, so you don't have to memorize all this now. And then gather um, gather contact information for the peers in your area. That may be simpler for some of you than others. So again, let me know if you need help with that. Uh, Cynthia Harris at the OCA is happy to help also, and I've let her know that she may be hearing from some of you. Um, she cannot release uh, names to you, but if you want to, let's say, you know, contact all of the certified peers in your region, she can forward something from you to that list, and she has them all grouped by region, so that should be helpful. The next step, really, is to get information out to the peers and, and peer support specialists, other stakeholders in your region, so they know about a service definition, so that they're um, educated on what it is that we're talking about. And on the checklist here, I suggest that you get this completed by November 13th. The method about how you want to do this is completely up to you. I'm happy to help you figure it out if, if you need me to, but you know, you could do this in any way. Conference call meeting, town hall meeting, emails, whatever you think is going to work best for folks in, in your area. I would suggest that um, you maybe use more than one method just to be sure you get in touch with as many people as possible. So after you've given them the information uh, that they need on this, on, on what we're talking about, then you can collect um, whatever feedback, opinions, et cetera, that they want to share. I suggest that you've collected all of this by November 19th, because then we've got Thanksgiving coming up and things will get a little dicey for everybody, I'm sure. And then next, if you can organize that feedback that you've received and get it back to me by November 24th, then I can turn around and get it to DBH uh, by the time our deadline uh, ends at the end of November. And I, you know, to me, it doesn't matter what kind of format you get it in, as long as I can follow uh, what you're sending me, um, just, you know, put it in whatever format you think works. As long as I can understand it, that's fine. And again, I'll send this checklist out to you so you have it. You don't have to use it, uh, but things like this are helpful for me when I'm trying to get something done in a short amount of time. And certainly if you have more questions or need more information about it, just let me know. Any questions on that? No. Amy, I have a question. Mm -hmm. This is Tammy from Region 3. Mm -hmm. Can I have the list of the peer leaders for Region 3 and their email addresses so I can contact them? Some of the people I don't know. Sure. I thought maybe what I'd do is when I send a follow-up email, just kind of send out um, a chart that has the names and email addresses for the people in each region. Great. Okay. And what I'm what I'm hoping um, is that in each region we'll have uh, you know representatives from uh, each of the three disciplines that we're talking about: youth, family, and adult peer support. And obviously that isn't necessary, but you know, for those of you that work exclusively with adults, you may not know how to contact all of the family support specialists um, in your area, or maybe you do. But I think it'll help if we have a diverse group of leaders in each region um, that can help communicate with all the people that we need to reach. And based on what you all have uh, put in SurveyMonkey, it looks like we have a really good representation from 
from each group. So, so far, so good. Is there anybody that has questions about um, a role of leadership in general? Anyone that has any specific concerns, and you may not want to share those today, but specific concerns about being able to get all this done in addition to uh, what you already have on your plate. Okay. Well, I um, have my phone number there up on the screen. Please call me anytime. Uh, please email me anytime and encourage others to do the same thing as you're going through this. If you, you know, run into some snags or have some questions, um, you know, I'm here to answer those. Uh, we can get in touch with Alan um, if there's some things that you, you want to ask him or get more clarification on, too. Uh, we're here to help. But as you know, um, we can only do so much. And so your partnership is absolutely critical. Uh, if we're really going to make this work, you know, I can send out an email to, let's say, everybody that has volunteered to stay informed, those people that signed up at the summit to stay informed about Project Propel. But that's not nearly as effective as um, the folks in your region hearing directly from you and having you available to give information and answer questions. So your participation is it's crucial in this. And uh I won't be able to do it. Alan won't be able to do it um, if we don't have this strong partnership and, and uh, leadership from you all. So we really appreciate it. And I, I can't emphasize enough that you're fulfilling a, a very important role and that I know folks across the state appreciate it. I think we've gone through the majority of our agenda. Any questions, anything we didn't cover on the agenda before we talk about moving forward? Okay, what, um, what does anyone think about doing another call um, maybe mid-November sometime just to see how things are going or to give people an opportunity to talk if they have questions, talk to, maybe talk to one another about how it's going? Well, this would be a good uh, time frame for me. This is John Friday. Um, I'm open to the days, but the, the time works real well if it's between 11 and 12. Okay. John, do you think we would benefit from a call maybe mid-November, or do you think we can just wait until after we get this stuff done? I think um, staying in contact with a point-of-contact person uh, would work real well for me. Uh, and then having, once we have the information gathered, having a, a, a more uh, organized contact with everyone. Okay. Any other thoughts on that from anybody? Is there anybody that's concerned that you will not have someone that's willing to be that point of contact in your region? I'd be happy to do it for Region 4 if no one else wants to. Absolutely. This is Tommy. Okay. Hey, congratulations on the new job, Tommy. Thank you. Pretty excited about it. Awesome. Tommy, are you the Region 4 Consumer Specialist? Right. I'll be starting in, in uh, towards the middle of December in that role. Oh, wonderful. That's great. Uh, Region 3 folks, do you want to talk about who's going to be your point of contact while we're on the call? Um, I would be happy to. This is Tammy at, at Region 3, but um, it's up to the group who they would like. This is Carla from Region 3 and Tammy. I think we would do fine working together, and if you'd like to be the point of contact, that'd be great. Okay.
And Tommy, which region are you said region four? Is that right? Okay. So once we have all of those uh, decisions made, I'll get um, an email out to the larger uh, group that signed up at the summit that says, here's what we're doing. Here are the leaders in your area. Here's your main point of contact. You should be hearing from these people soon. Um, if you don't, you know, give them a shout and say, you know, I must have got left off the email or, or notice that went out. Um, anyone else from, let's see, Region 5? Anybody want to volunteer from that region to be the point of contact? Region 6. Okay, how about Region 1? Okay. Well, I trust that y'all can, can make that happen. And if you're having trouble finding a, a point of contact anywhere, please let me know. Um, but for Tommy and uh, then Tammy, um, I'll leave that to you too in your particular regions. And, you know, certainly like you say, if there's someone else that wants to do it, I'm sure you'll be flexible about that. But I'll assume it's going to be you too in those regions for the time being. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I think um, I will set up a call for probably mid-November just for people who want to get on, who, who need that as a time to ask questions or check in about how things are going. If everything's going fine, no need to, to call in. Um, and then we'll set a call for everybody uh, maybe the first part of December. And I think since we don't have everyone on the call, Today, I might go ahead and just send out a doodle poll for that December meeting unless you think we should just go ahead and set a date right now. Anybody have a feeling on that? Well, I think our schedules may change that far ahead, so um, I would opt for a doodle later. Okay. All right, I'll send that out later on. All right. Can you, can you send out that contact list for the peer leaders as soon as possible so we can get organized? I sure will. I will do it. Okay, everybody. Uh, please get in contact with me uh, if you have any questions maybe that you didn't get a chance to answer today or need some clarification. Um, I'll be in the office the rest of the day, um, except for lunchtime. Um, and I put the uh, put my phone number at the beginning of the slideshow, and I'll send that out too. But just in case, it's 402-552-7694. Or, of course, you can shoot me an email anytime. Well, all right, everybody, thank you very much again. I look forward to, to getting to know all of you better and, and working with you more. And I, I think what's really great um, is that we had, let's see, 26 people volunteer, and 98% of those people uh, had never volunteered for something with Beacon before. So we've got some new folks at the table, and I think that's just absolutely wonderful. Um, we need some, some fresh ideas and some new folks out there. So thanks to all of you that volunteered. And, and I, again, I really look forward to working with you and getting to know you better. But with that, I want all of you to have a good weekend and a happy Halloween. And we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.
Thank you. Thank you.